Hi, I'm Femi OK. You're watching the stream. The recent high profile arrests of three prominent critics of Zimbabwe's government is the starting point for today's conversation. You may remember former stream guest Fadzai Mahare. She was recently detained for commenting on an alleged case of police brutality. She's now out on bail, and this is what she told the stream earlier. The opposition continues to be stifled in Zimbabwe with opponents of the regime, whether they're journalists, members of the main opposition, or general government critics being locked up for protesting, uh, you know, some of the indiscretions of the regime, including police brutality and corruption. This has had an undoubted chilling effect on people's abilities to speak out freely. It's had a chilling effect on freedom of expression, and it's certainly undermined um, the ability of citizens to hold the government to account. Is Zimbabwe criminalizing dissent? If you have an opinion on that, if you've got examples of that, you know what to do on YouTube. You can jump into the comment section and be part of today's program. We were also hoping that the Information Ministry of Zimbabwe would also be part of today's program. We reached out, we asked them multiple times. They did not respond to our requests, but we do have an excellent lineup of guests as always when we talk about Zimbabwe. Bright, Doug, Tendai, thank you for being on the stream today. Bright, tell our audience who you are, what you do. Hi there, Bright. You're muted right now. I'm hoping that you will unmute yourself or we will unmute you. All right, fantastic. Take two on that. Bright, hello. Welcome to the stream. Well, thank you. Introduce yourself, Bright. Tell our audience who you are. And what you do. Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Bright Matonga. I'm a former Deputy Information Minister in the uh, former President Gabe's government. I'm a politician and I belong to Zanu PF. As my views uh, are aligned with Zanu PF. Mm, good to have you. Hello, Doug. Nice to have you on the stream. Tell our international audience who you are, why you're relevant to today's conversation. Hi, Femi. Uh, my name is Doug Coltart. Uh, I'm a human rights lawyer and a constitutional lawyer. I spent I spend a lot of my time representing uh, uh, people, you know, like the the the, the, uh, um, the three who have been uh, locked up for in this latest incident. People who speak out uh, on issues and, and and are locked up. And I've been part of the legal team representing Hopal Chimono, uh, a journalist. Good to have you. And hello, Tendai. Welcome to the stream. What do our audience need to know about who you are and what you do? Well, good evening. Uh, well, I, I wear so many heads, literally and metaphorically. I'm Tendai Biti. I'm a constitutional mm -hmm. uh, lawyer, uh, member of parliament, uh, as well as um, the vice president uh, of Zimbabwe's uh, biggest party, the Movement for Democratic Change Alliance, led by advocate Nelson Chamisa. So this is quite a contentious conversation. We're going to use these recent arrests uh, and detention of three quite high profile critics of Zimbabwe's government as like a case study, really, on what's happening in Zimbabwe. Uh, have a look here on my laptop. These were the three that we are talking about. This is Fadzai, who you saw earlier. This is Joe. He's from the MDC Alliance and he's an MP. And then you may well re recognize Hope Welch no -No, who's a very well known journalist in uh, Zimbabwe and often does stories uh, critiquing the government. So let me just start with Bright. Bright, why were these three even arrested briefly? Uh, first and foremost, I would like to wish um, Fadzai a speed recovery. I saw your post that uh, she's down with red uh, disease, corona. Uh, we share the best. Uh, my understanding is that uh, they published falsehoods that uh, a, a junior police officer um, killed a nine month old baby with a baton, uh, but it was uh, uh, then proved to be false. No one was killed. So that's the, my understanding why uh, all of the three of them were arrested for. Uh, publishing falsehoods. 
All right, so that is your understanding. Let me show uh, our audience on my laptop. This is from New Zimbabwe. This is the headline here. Latest police investigation dismisses cop baby murder claims. You'll see there a lady in red holding a baby. Let me show you the video from that page and you can have a look for yourself. You can't always decide from looking at video, but let's roll that police brutality video because I want you to see some of the chaos. This was the first week of January. Two very different stories going around, Doug. One story was that the police accidentally beat the baby and the baby died. The police are saying that shards of glass fell on the baby, as far as I can tell from their report, and the baby hasn't died. Doug. Well, <clears throat> for your international audience, I think it's important uh, in, uh, to, to, to know that in that video, uh, what the crowd are shouting at the police officer is, you kill the baby, you kill the baby, he killed the baby. That's the refrain which is repeatedly being uh, uh, shouted at the police officer. Uh, it's for the state to prove, uh, you know, in that case, uh, whether that baby is, is, is alive or not. Uh, we don't know at this stage, uh, but I think that in, in, to a large degree, that totally misses the point of what this is really about. This is not about publishing falsehoods. For a start, the uh, the crime of, of publishing falsehoods that the three have been have been charged with was struck down by the Constitutional Court of Zimbabwe as unconstitutional. It was declared void. Therefore, it's not a law. It it it, it is mm -hmm. not a law in terms of our law. It's been struck down. But secondly. These three individuals who are, are, are um, uh, critics of the regime, uh, two uh, as politicians, one as a journalist, have been arrested multiple times if, uh, and, 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 and not about, uh, about uh, falsehoods. The, the previous time Hopewell Chingono was arrested, the, he was arrested for correctly reporting uh, on, on corruption in the NPA. And, and the whole charge was based on the fact that since he correctly reported what was happening in, in the, sorry, the NPA is the prosecuting authority, uh, since he correctly reported that, uh, he must have, uh, have sources in the NPA and therefore is interfering in the NPA's activities. So, so it, it really has nothing to do with, uh, with, with fake news or anything like that. That's really is a, is a red herring. This is about cracking down on people speaking out against police brutality uh, and, and corruption within the, the Zimbabwe regime. Tendai, I'm going to show our audience uh, two tweets. One is from Fadzai and the other one is from Hopewell. Let's go to those two tweets. I'm just wondering, there are some parts of the world where tweeting out information or story or sharing a story, that will get you put in prison. Is Zimbabwe one of those countries? Well, thank you. I, I think that uh, the real issue here is that uh, Zimbabwe is veered uh, in a direction where civic rights, uh, constitutional rights are being trounced left, right and center by the new regime uh, headed by uh, Mr. Emerson uh, Manangagwa. The fact of the matter is that uh, since uh, November 2017, uh, uh, pursuant to the coup that removed uh, President uh, uh, Mugabe, uh, we have seen a massive uh, deterioration of the uh, human rights and political situation uh, in our country. We've seen a massive correction, corrosion uh, of civic and, and political uh, rights. We have seen a total emasculation uh, of alternative uh, 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 voices. So the attack on uh, and arrest on Wopu Chingono, uh, Job Wiwaskala, and Fadzai Mahere, they, the state uh, unleashes its full might uh, against the citizens who actually report the substance of their tweets was that they'd been police uh, violence against an unarmed uh, woman and, and a child. The police themselves don't dispute that. As a matter of fact, they've gone in public to say uh, the concerned policemen are facing uh, disciplinary uh, charges. Uh, the issue of the whether the baby is alive or not 
is a dispute of fact. Uh, as Doug Coulter has correctly observed, if you understood uh, our, our language, I, my mother language is Shona, the people in that video mm. are shouting, uh, you have killed this, this baby, you have killed this baby. They are protesting. And it's an instantaneous uh, protestation to, to, to the police uh, held yeah. on time, live. So they couldn't be making it up. They're not, they're not actors. This is not Hollywood right. or, or Nollywood. Right. So the real issue and, here is yeah. a deranged regime that is a masculine alternative a opinion. And Fadzai, Hopewell, and Job are just mere examples of the continued deterioration of the human rights situation in our country. Let me just bring Bright back into the conversation. I'm looking here at uh, an edition of the Zimbabwe Mail, and I'm, I'm going to take us beyond this, this tragic story because it's a very difficult story to get our head around, but use it as an example. So the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe is a constitutional democracy, says the ZANU-PF. This is the national spokesperson speaking out about this particular story and why three people quite high prominent critics of the Zimbabwean government, why they were detained. So let me just go down here. The spokesperson said that all citizens who are suspected to have committed crimes in Zimbabwe are sub subjected to due processes of the law, irrespective of one's political affiliation and station in life. So basically saying, this is not looking at the politics, not the fact they're criticizing the government, they just broke the law. Right, but I'm wondering though, if this has a chilling effect on people being able to use social media or do journalism or critique police brutality. What does this say about Zimbabwe right now? If let, me just, let me first of all correct Doug. He's saying that piece of legislation that is being used was struck off. Yes, it was struck off in 2014, but Parliament of Zimbabwe, which the it belongs to, and Job Wewa uh, Scala belongs to, it was reinstated in 2016 as amendment number um, 20 of the 2013 constitution. So that law exists. If they disagree uh, with, uh, with that piece of legislation, they know what to do. They should have approached the same court um, to have that um, uh, judgment uh, restored. So it's not correct to say that uh, that law doesn't exist. It does exist. They now need to appeal. Zimbabwe is a constitutional democracy. That's why that piece of legislation was struck off. Let me just uh, 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 put something to you. There are 1,600 full-time journalists in Zimbabwe. There are 850 freelance journalists. There are 35 foreign correspondents in Zimbabwe. There are 270 media houses, of which the state controls two. There are more than uh, 2,000 uh, practicing uh, lawyers in Zimbabwe, and more than 3,500 lawyers registered within the law, uh, law, society, uh, law society of Zimbabwe. So for anyone to say that uh, there is no democracy in Zimbabwe, that the you know people are being muzzled, it's very unfair. We are talking about one journalist out of a total of about 3,500 journalists. They have not been arrested. And just, uh, right, but I'm, just, I'm, uh, I'm wondering. I, I'm wondering about this one particular journalist. I, I, I know you, you, you said that it, it, he's, he's attracting a lot of attention. So let's go back to July 2020, for instance. This is when he was held on indictment charges, and then in November of last year, he was charged with obstruction of justice, and then in January of this year same journalist was held on communication and false hearts, falsehoods charges and that was for sharing a tweet. Doug, is this journalism where you can actually communicate freely or not? Bright is saying no, Bright is saying that there are plenty of journalists in Zimbabwe. This one is just getting himself into trouble. You represent him. I know you're working on his various different cases. What will be your response to Bright about Chinono in particular? Femi, can I just take a moment to respond to Bright on uh, on some falsehoods that he has been communicating? Um, I won't about ask for him, to be okay. for him to be charged right. because it's because there's no law to charge him with. But that law was not reenacted, mm. and I think this is very important to address. What the, the law that Bright is talking about was something called the General Law Amendment Act. 
And what it did is it just made some tweaks to the language in, 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 in a whole range of acts, scores of different acts. It, all that it did is, was replaced a couple of words. And one of the things that was, uh, that was changed was uh, our prison service changed from being called prisons to prison services. And they just went uh, sweeping uh, through all the legislation and anywhere where it said prisons, uh, it was changed to prisons and correctional services. Now, one of the places where that appears is, was Section 31. Now, literally, the only reference to Section 31 in that act that Bright references, it, 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 simply, says, uh, it simply says that the substitution of prison service with prison and correctional services. That, that with respect, does not reenact a law that has been struck down by the Constitutional Court in, a, in an over 80-page reasoned ju judgment explaining why this law is unconstitutional. I just needed to set the record straight on, on that particular issue. Now, to your question on, uh, on, 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 on whether this is really just one journalist, I mean, I think the, the first thing to say is that Hopewell Chingono is not the only journalist who is, is being persecuted by the state. Uh, Nduduzi uh, Matutu, for example, is a journalist who has written critical pieces. His nephew was abducted and brutally tortured. That was captured on, uh, on CCTV footage and government has not denied that uh, Towanda Muchaiwa was abducted and tortured. He was interrogated about his uncle's sources uh, during his, uh, his abduction and torture. And uh, Nduduzi Matutu is in hiding as we speak. Other journalists have been arrested. Uh, 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 Frank Chikuore has been, uh, 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 just to name one other, uh, was arrested uh, on, on, on a whole range of charges. Journalists last year were beaten up by the military. This is, this is a widespread pra practice against, uh, uh, against journalists. Now, coming to Hopewell in particular, in each of his cases, he has, uh, he has, they have, the, the state has gone after him because, because he has either been exposing uh, uh, corruption in, in government, he has been speaking about police brutality, or he has been reporting on citizens who are exercising uh, their rights to protest against uh, corruption and, uh, and, and other abuses. Mm -hmm. So this is, this, is, this is a clear targeting of a particular journalist who has been especially um, um, outspoken and seemingly from the fact that uh, they keep arresting him and he keeps on reporting in the way that he has done, mm -hmm. a fearless journalist who the government fears. Let me just broaden out the conversation uh, with you, Tendai, uh, and looking at if 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 this falsehoods law is being applied, uh, is it being applied evenly to opposition members as well as ZANU PF members? Have a listen to this. I'd love you to come off the back of this comment. Uh, what you want to know, um, Job Sekala, Fadza Mahere. Uh, and many others that are languishing in Riman prison, some are being processed through the system, are basically saying that corruption in the country has become a major enabler for all the poverty the country is experiencing. So when a whole government decides to uh, prefer um, a charge of uh, peddling uh, falsehoods, uh, in order to claim down on uh, criticism is a bit rich because politicians lie every day and they ne they're never held to account for, for the promises they make. <laughs> uh, Tenda, I, I, I wonder if I can include you in the politicians who may not be telling the truth every single day, but is, is the attention of the Zimbabwe government applied evenly to ZANU-PF members and opposition members? Your thoughts? Well, firstly, just to say that uh, we actually don't have a falsehood law in Zimbabwe. Uh, just to buttress what uh, uh, Doug Coulter was saying, uh, Section 31 of our criminal court was in fact uh, outlawed as way back as uh, 2014. But it was outlawed in relation to the old Zimbabwean constitution that was replaced in 2013. There's since been a subsequent constitutional case that has determined the constitutionality of Section 31 vis-à-vis mm. -vis, uh, the new constitution. And the constitutional court Tendai, is reaffirmed. Tendai, it's, Tendai it's, I, I, it's hear the, I, hear the, I hear the 
I hear the difference, except that everybody else who's not in Zimbabwe yeah. is going to have trouble following you. So let's cut to the chase. Opposition members, yes, so, cabinet so, ministers, so, so, are they both equally, equally uh, treated? No, there is an even and an equal application uh, of the law. Uh, Fadzai Mairi uh, has spent more than a week in uh, police uh, custody. She was at our maximum prison, uh, Chikurubi, uh, which exposed her to COVID. And as I'm speaking to you right now, uh, she mm. is a victim uh, of COVID. You have had people from ZANU-PF who have committed on the face of it much gross criminal offenses. I want to give you two examples. Our estuary minister uh, of health, uh, Dr. Obedaya Moyo, accused of fraud of US $63 million. He did not spend a single night in police uh, custody. Our estuary minister of uh, labor and social service, Priscilla Mufumira, accused of fraud of US $93 million. She would come to court in Veshasi uh, 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 dresses, in Jimmy Choo mm. uh, 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 handbags. That's the selective, right. in an equal and an even application right. of the law that we have lived with for four, four decades uh, of, of, of Zambia. And I thank you. Thank you for sharing those examples. We, we, we've got more from a YouTube. Thank you, YouTube commenters. Uh, Bright, this is going to be a speed round. I need some very fast, pacey responses. So, uh, one one says Zimbabwe youth don't realise that their four stories spread through the internet. Internet. We will have slander laws soon. Bright, instant reaction to that. Immediate. Go ahead. Definitely, uh, definitely, our laws are very, um, uh, are very relaxed. We need to uh, mm -hmm. to strengthen our laws, yeah, our li laws of libel. There are certain laws or uh, crimes that should not be criminal but should be civil. And I just want to right. to, to, go, to go back. Okay, to I'm going to I'm going to move on to another question, Bright, because our YouTubers want to be part of this show, and you've had a big chunk, and I I need to share it around with them. This is Farah. This is for you, Doug. Very quickly, these situations are not new to Africa in general, and are actually increasing day by day. The governments are getting more brutal as there are no bigger authorities to check them. Doug, instant reaction. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think this week uh, we have all been so uh, uh, taken in by following events in Uganda and seeing how uh, there has been a brutal crackdown uh, on uh, on the opposition there, on Bobby Wine and 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 his team. Uh, we see this all across uh, the continent, and and it's it's very disturbing. Uh, we see uh, brutality meted, meted out that. Uh, that the liberation struggles of, uh, of uh, uh, all across Africa were meant to deal yeah. with, to me were meant to address, right. were meant to, to create new societies where people were free to speak, were free to, uh, to create a life, a better life for themselves. And, 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 and sadly, right. we are not seeing that. And, 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 and bringing it back to Zimbabwe, often the, the laws that are used to crack down on people, ironically, have their roots in the, in the evil and racist colonial system but instead of dismantling that uh, that colonial system we see it mm. uh, it being uh, entrenched and used against uh, uh, against the citizens who our erstwhile liberators were meant to free all right uh, it, it, interesting comment here. It's almost a compliment, but I, I would say uh, for you, Bright and Zanu Pf, I was I call it a compliment dis, a compliment um, and a dis at the same time. Chibamu says there has been no change in Zimbabwe. In fact, to put it correctly, the Mugabe regime, which you serve, Bright, was a better devil. Now Zimbabwe is under a brutal regime, far worse than Museveni's. You know that we will always come back to this conversation about Zimbabwe, how it is serving its citizens. There's one, there's one video I want to leave you with, and this is a really important video because it brings us up to date with what is happening now as far as COVID is concerned. This is the president of Transform Zimbabwe. Have a listen, have a look. I strongly condemn the recent arrest of uh, Hopol Chimono, uh, Job Sikala, Alan Moyo, and Fazai Mahere. 
it is their constitutional right to express themselves and nobody should be arresting them. In any case, the government should be using the mega resources they have to fight COVID and assist the people of Zimbabwe, not to hunt down their enemies. The tragedy of all this is the fact that the judiciary, which is supposed to be independent and the third arm of government, has become an accomplice in this, in this whole fracas, which is very unfortunate. The future looks bleak. Mm, I hope not. Bright, Doug, Tendai, thank you for being part of this conversation. YouTubers, I appreciate you too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.